Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is tactical intervention. Well, it's supposedly the successor that Counter-Strike deserved, but not the one it needs right now, including some of the original devs from the original Counter-Strike mod before Valve got its grubby mitts on it. And now they bring you a free-to-play shooter published by Fix Korea Corporation and Elite Games which is perhaps the most obnoxious name developer in the history of anything, but there you go. Obviously, they didn't spring for any music anywhere in the game, so you're going to hear probably fan noise in the background until we actually get into the game. You have my apologies for that. This room's a little warm. Anyway, let's have a look at the options menu before we start. So I did mention that it was a free-to-play game, and for some reason, the volume decided to reset itself, so I'm going to knock it down there so I can actually hear what I'm doing. It's a free-to-play game, and you can buy a couple of starter packs on Steam for $15 each if you so desire. You don't need to, but they unlock a couple of cosmetics and some weapons which you can use on both terrorist and counter-terrorist permanently. It uses, for the most part, the rental and perma-buy system, and we'll look at the overall cost and the rate of earnings a little bit later on. Options menu looks something like this. That's advanced video right there. Every time you click on one of these things, it actually tells you what it does, which would be nice if it wasn't horribly irritating. I have a feeling the best way of doing it would simply be to have the instructions, you know, over here, since the options menu only takes up half the screen. That would make a little bit more sense, so it took a little while for me to set up the options as I liked here. This is not what I would call a good-looking game, so you may be able to crank this right up to max. It is very much Source Engine, and by Jove, does it look like Source Engine. Engine. No FOV slider, no idea why. This is a PC game, so it's very strange not to find that. But whatever the case, what I will say is that I didn't have too many problems with the overall field of view. I think it seems like it's about 90, maybe 85, which is acceptable. But the weapon models are a little large for my taste. It would be nice if they were able to change that. I certainly miss my own Counter-Strike GO models. Aside from that, fully rebindable keys and so on and so forth, as you might expect, and mouse acceleration defaults to off because they're not idiots, mostly. So is this the Counter-Strike successor that people were looking for? <laughs> I can safely say probably not, but it does have dogs. So this is Year of the Dog, actually, when it comes to FPS. We've had, what, Rise of the Triad, we've got Call of Duty Ghosts with its mocap dog, and then this also has dog. All right, let's select ourselves a lobby. You can see here I've got my nice dog icon right there just to fit in with the theme. I'll hopefully blend in amongst them, and that will help me with my KD. So you've got various different lobbies available, and... The player base in the US is pretty active right now, actually. Good luck playing in Russia, but everywhere else is looking fairly healthy for the most part. I'm going to jump on USA East right here, and then we can pick from a variety of different things, which, generally speaking, involve missions and team deathmatch, yeah? Missions depend on which level you're on as to what you have to do. These include things like hostage rescue and some of the more odd stuff like highway, which I've got to show you because it's just completely bonkers. And then you've got your normal team deathmatch and things like that. You can also, of course, create your own game. Well, we can just show you that. There you go. Mission, VIP escort, hostage rescue, hostage capture, and things like that. And then team deathmatch. So nothing unusual there. We'll probably start with the TDM, just look at the gun mechanics and things like that. And I will have a look at the business model after I've shown you the gameplay. This is based on feedback I was given. All right, let's find ourselves a team deathmatch, shall we? We can start on this TDM office. That should work fairly well. Ready up and get ready to rock and roll. And then I'll show you things like the inventory customization. We've got about 30 seconds before this actually starts up. There are a few different maps. Not exactly a huge number, I've got to say. But the mission mode is different on every map that you're on, as opposed to team deathmatch, which is exactly what you would end up expecting. All right, I've actually won four matches and lost one so far. As usual, this is my first impression. It's about an hour in, give or take. The game does not exactly have a huge amount of depth, so there isn't really a lot to explore there, but we'll speculate as to balance and business model after we've done a couple of games. All right, in we go. And ready to rock and roll. Command the dog to attack and sniff the enemy and much more. Yeah, you can do that. You can do a lot of strange context-sensitive activities. I'm going to grab my AK. That's my dog. I don't believe you can use it outside of mission mode, so it's not really going to make much of a difference. This is the warm-up mode, by the way, so I will not be able to kill anybody here. But I will damn well try anyway. There we go. So this game has kill streaks, as you probably noticed in the... Starting lobby there. They're called so they're called requisitions. Yeah, whatever that means. So what you can do is you can requisition things like a mission-based weapon, a flashbang, MG4, which I assume is some kind of LMG, and things like that. 
All right, let's rock and roll, shall we? I'm going to take a little bit of a roll, quite literally. You can roll in this game, which is a little strange. You can roll away from explosives and gunshots and things like that. <laughs> Just moider, I tells you. It's all moider. <laughs> they had no idea I was up there. Now, what did you notice there? Massive, massive recoil. I have never seen a game with this much recoil. I've played armor, and that hasn't had as much recoil as this one. The guns go crazy, and I've tried a number of different weapons as well. As obviously, you know, it's an AK. AKs have a tendency to kick pretty badly. But this just kicks in an absurd way. I'm not really sure why they decided to do that. It was obviously their plan with the guns to give them a decent amount of feel, but the, the sheer amount of screen shake involved in this game is actually absurd, and it does make the game arguably just a little bit less fun to play. They were perhaps looking for that challenge and authenticity and nonsense like that, but I have a feeling that what actually ended up happening was they massively overdid the recoil, and it results in your screen just spazzing out after you've fired more than a couple of shots. Nice. You have requis requisited a fire grenade. I have no idea what that is, but I saw a bunch of guys in there, so it's my plan to throw all the grenades. There we go. Oh, I didn't get enough kills to get the MG4. Oh, well, never mind. That was amusing nonetheless. Strangely, I've actually found myself pretty good at this game. I think even though the recoil kicks you all over the place, because I'm used to recoil compensating in Counter-Strike and Planet Side 2, I actually kill more than most, and I have a feeling that a lot of the guys trying this game for the first time just cannot control the extreme recoil that actually ends up happening here, and I can, I can make some pretty good shots. There are no aim down sights options with anything outside of the sniper rifle, which is pretty interesting to say the least, and the game also has lean as well. There we go. In combination with the rolling mode, it's it's a very odd mix of kind of arcadey style nonsense and some interesting sort of pseudo authentic stuff. Have some grenades! Flashbang grenade went in there as well. There you go. Man, I am actually really good at this. <laughs> I'm not sure why. For some reason, I, I have to assume it's got something to do with the recoil compensation that I'm used to doing, but. Every game I've played, I've rolled a minimum of 2-1 KD, usually much higher. I'm surprisingly good at it. I don't know why. Now, you can actually heal your teammates. I'm not sure how you manage to do that, but you can, and it's mostly just by holding down the T button. Do I have another grenade? I do. All right, you can have one of those. There's a flashbang going down. Can't see this guy. Let's roll at him. Engage the rolling! He never saw that coming! That works surprisingly well. I don't think people expect it. I don't even think most of the players even know that function's actually there. Ooh, God, I was looking for that nine kills. I'm, oh, I'm only on 16 for three, guys. I'm sorry, I'm not pro MLG yet, but there you go. That was, uh, that's been, I've been doing fairly well so far, what can I say? There we go, I earned the lion's share of the, that's almost more than everybody else on the team. I'll, I'll take that, I'll definitely take that. Now, let's be entirely honest. This game looks like pants. Underpants. Not the trousers. It's... it looks terrible. Like, it is... it looks ancient. It looks like a mod for Half-Life 2. It arguably... I'd say it's about the same. Maybe I'm just looking at this through rose-tinted spectacles, but it looks like Counter-Strike Source, and it's been in development for some time, and I'm frankly quite surprised that they were able to put out a game in this day and age that looks like this. This looks very, very dated. All of it. Textures, animation quality, animations frequently seem to bug out or spaz out or decouple so that you don't get a smooth movement or anything along those lines. And I think the lack of gun animations is compensated for by the fact that the guns just shoot up and recoil in a very extreme manner, so maybe they get away with it like that. Also, the sound assets are not good. I'd say they probably spent the most amount of time on the gun sounds, and they're okay, but things like the death sounds and the pain sounds, there's about three of them, and you hear them over and over and over again. And the worst thing is whenever your team takes any damage, you just feel like, I'm dying here, over and over and over again. Which is, is a very, very silly thing indeed. I mean, come on, this is... This is not a good-looking game. 
Just be honest about that. It is, however, free to play, so at least you're not paying for the privilege of playing a game that looks several years old. However, after saying all that, I have a feeling this game is kind of one of those so bad it's good kind of affairs. It really is. It's surprisingly, surprisingly like that. There are a lot of parts of this game that I would consider to be utterly janky. The excessive recoil, the poor animation quality, the repeated use of the same sound effects over and over and over again. However, there are some nice little interesting things, especially in the mission mode. There's actually a mission mode which is dedicated to driving around in cars and shooting people with pistols as you protect the VIP. Which is the silliest thing, and I'm gonna show it to you, it's just daft. The fact that there's a roll, for instance, the fact that there are certain locations, as you saw, that you can rappel down in certain game modes. The notion that you slow down when you get hit in the leg and you start limping around a little bit. The idea that you can slowly heal your teammates, but not yourself. These are all ideas which are actually quite nifty. Unfortunately, it seems like there's blind fire as well, but I'll be damned if I know how to do that. But as you can clearly see, the ragdolls are awful, and you can clip through desks and nonsense like that. Just through pieces of terrain. It's just silly. It's very, very low rent. It feels extremely low budget, to say the least. There's also other problems like spawning in this game. It seems like for some reason you end up being able to spawn in an area that allows you to outflank and horribly murder the enemy team in a surprisingly easy fashion. It seems like maybe the levels are just flat out too small, so you end up trying to roam around in packs and hopefully cover the back, because more often than not, you'll find that an enemy can just come around and just shoot half of your team in the back, because the levels are designed in such a way to allow that to happen. This level of back spawning is a tad excessive, and has certainly been disliked in other FPS. The original Black Ops had problems like that. This game similarly so. You can even pick up fire extinguishers or shoot them to actually block out areas, which is, is kind of neat. It really is. But let's not go crazy. This game is not a very, very good FPS. It is... It's a mess. It really, really is. But more often than not, it ends up being a fairly entertaining mess. Let me demonstrate what I mean. So we're going to go and try a mode called Highway. And this is highly silly. And you're going to see exactly what I mean about entertaining, ridiculous mess. So here's a Highway server. Game is in progress. We're going to go and counter terrorists because that, let that lets you drive. So on the Highway, you have to escort a VIP. And you have to do so in a car. And there's a set of escort cars, but the terrorists also have cars. And it is... You drive around a highway pass in a car. And it's ridiculous. It's probably not going to let me spawn until I go around here. But we, it's okay, we can spectate the incredible cars. These vehicles look like they were from CS 1.5. Was it 1.5 that had the APC in it? I can't recall. It's a bloody helicopter following that as well. The driving is just awful. But it's hilariously awful. The guy driving can also shoot and reload a pistol while driving, which is very surprising, but also highly entertaining. So you end up ramming into other cars and shooting them. The cars deform in the most hilariously stupid of ways. The chase camera is so bad it's barely watchable, as you can see. I don't even know what's going on. But it's hilarious. It's actually kind of fun. That's what surprises me about it. If they were actually charging money for this game, then I would be telling you just avoid it like the plague, but because it's free, it actually might be worth a bash. <laughs> so that's a VIP limping around with this gigantic briefcase. It's just so silly. It is so silly. Oh my, oh my. All right, we've got to play this mode again. Hopefully they'll let us do another round on this because this is just stupid. Now, there are times, I've got to say, when free-to-play games, even if the game is free, it's still not worth grabbing, yeah? It's just not worth having. 
because there are better games to play that are also free. Yeah? You're, you're using your time. Time is money, friend, and so on and so forth. In this case, though, you, you have to experience this. I'm sorry. This is just ridiculous. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Get out of here. AI cars, nonsense like that as well. Oh, man. You can see the GPS over there. We're going to go around the long way, I think. So I'm going to try and drive the VIP to safety as you see the texture pop in. And there's an awful lot of texture pop in. It's just so dumb. How look at how blurry the dashboard is. It's a sprite, from what I can tell. It's just a really bad texture. The funny thing is that half the dashboard is higher texture than this is. You see, like, the stuff to the left is higher texture than the stuff to the right. It's comical. It is astonishingly comical. I think I'm going the wrong way here. But frankly, it's still quite fun. Especially this one. There's a couple of other things. <laughs> Just smack the horn over and over again. There are a couple of other modes like Hostage Rescue that are a little bit more awkward. Like, in Counter-Strike... You probably remember doing hostage stuff, and there's really not an awful lot of hostages you have to worry about. Here, you have to control an entire mall's worth of them, which is a little bit funny. It's like they took Counter-Strike modes and said, just how much more stupid can we make this? And all credit to them, they succeeded in doing that. And I think going this way was a big mistake. Oh, there's a car behind me. Oh, dear. This may not go well. I don't even know where I'm going because the GPS is apparently just crapped out. So it's not even showing me the way. Uh-oh. Aha! This was what I would call a tactical intervention. Get out of the way! Don't put your bloody Toyota Corolla there. Jeez. There we go. It's daft. Thoroughly daft. But is it's actually kind of fun. And you can have a good time with it. Surprisingly. But yeah, I mean, we're clearly going to lose this round because I couldn't even find the way to the bloody thing. The GPS is kind of pointing me across in a direction that I can't actually follow, so that's not all that helpful. All right, I got five seconds. There's no way I'm reaching this. The GPS just doesn't work half the time. It only seems to show you the GPS on a certain part of the road. The rest of it sort of disappears. We'll have a look at the business model after I've done one more round of this. I think I'll be a passenger this time around. I'm not going to drive. That sounds like a bad idea. I'm going to take out my AK. We got a draw, and we got some points, so I guess that's okay. And apparently, I'm still driving an escort car. All right. Well, at least I'm escorting the VIP. All right. Let's get some road rage going up on up in here. There's a guy with a rifle next to me. It reminds me of those kind of silly battlefield moments where it's kind of buggy versus buggy, only in the entire mode is like that. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to block this guy to let the VIP escape. This mode's got some value to it, even though it's incredibly badly done. It is mod quality. And that can definitely rub people the wrong way, especially considering that they're asking for money through the free-to-play model. It's hard to say whether or not the guns are balanced or not, honestly. There, there are various bars indicating the stats of it, but it's kind of hard to say as to whether or not those guns are balanced properly because those bars are sort of subjective and relative as opposed to something like say blacklight retribution which does a phenomenal job of being transparent and tells you the exact stats of everything all right we have a successfully escorted the vip let's get him upstairs <laughs> it's a cool mode it's kind of fun you know if this game came out years ago if this game came out five years ago well, maybe eight years ago, it would have been lauded as a fantastic multiplayer FPS. As it stands, the technology's way behind the times, but some of the ideas behind it are actually kind of fun, if not very well implemented. So, let's have a look at the business model behind this, shall we? So we're going to go to the inventory. In fact, let's just go to the shop and see what's going on. So, as you can probably see here, I should probably just leave this room. Because otherwise I'll probably get kicked. There we go. So as you can see, they use GP, which is an in-game currency here. It's game points. So you start with 10,000 to begin with. Maybe you don't. Maybe that just comes with the... I got 10,000 to start with, but maybe that's because I bought a bundle or something like that. Currently I have 6,650... Oh, yeah, you can see it right down there. And I bought an item with it. I bought the submachine gun for seven days. 
So it uses that kind of rental system. Very Korean, which of course is what you'd expect considering it's actually published by a Korean firm. The most expensive gun in the game appears to be this, the AR DSA 58, which is a 10,000 game point rental. You can permanently buy it for 81,000 game points or $10.77. That's pretty expensive, even compared to something like Blacklight Retribution. And unfortunately, it doesn't have a one-day rental option. The cool thing about Blacklight, which I thought let it get away with the fact that the guns were quite expensive and that they had a rental model in there, is that they let you, re they let you rent pre-made guns that were really competitive for 24 hours for about 200 points, which was basically 20 minutes worth of gameplay. So you could rent that gun and then play around with it the entire day and earn a bunch more points. I think that was a really good system. Here, they only allow seven day rentals, which cost a lot of points. For a TDM, where I went like 16, four, something like that, I was getting around 300 points. So that's a lot of games. You know, you've got to be playing maybe 30 to 35, maybe 40 games to unlock a gun for, t for seven days. You could do that in a day potentially, but I have a feeling that might be a bit high. But we are talking about the big guns. You know, that is the biggest gun available. You look at the shotties, they're a bit cheaper. The Tukarov TGS-12, that's a $6.25 gun. Some of the pistols are a little bit cheaper as well. I could buy this for $4.78, rent it for 66 cents for seven days, 3,600 points or 2,900 game points to permanently unlock, which might be a little bit much for some people. You've then got your equipment as well. Riot shields are coming are back. I mean, that's absurd when you think about it. Medium armor, heavy armor, med kits, all this kind of stuff that you can actually buy here. Wow, these animations are just gnarly, aren't they? And then you can buy pets for the mission mode, which, you know, they're available for use in mission mode only, and you can actually buff them as well, so I haven't really actually got to play around with those. I've never seen anyone actually using them. The default gun seems decent, yeah, but it's hard to say, honestly, as to which is better and which isn't. My AK is pretty good, and I rented the P90 for seven days, and I had equal success with the P90 as opposed to that. The P90's got a little bit less recoil than the AK but it seemed to do a pretty good job of hosing people down. So that's that, and then they've got crates. These are all bought. You can actually buy a quick start crate, and for the most part, these seem to just have rentals in them, which is not that great, honestly. A light crate would give you what? Contains one item. It also contains game points, at least 2,000 game points, things like that. It's, it's a little bit gambly, in my opinion, but you get this for like a month, which is not too bad. Getting a good pistol for a month, like get an MP5 with an ACOG for a month for $2 compared to the price of that otherwise is not bad. It's not too bad at all. That's the MP5 right there. You want it for seven days, that's 66 cents. You want it for 28, and obviously that's a little bit more. So I guess that's not too shabby. I'm not entirely certain if it's actually possible to get guns here that are not elsewhere. It seems like they are, like getting a P90, a silenced P90. I don't think you can actually get that any other way. I've not seen a way to customize the actual guns. There seems to be a lack of that because I have the P90 here. So it's like, all right, it's there. Can I customize it? That's the question. Is that actually possible? If I view my inventory here... I got an inventory and it's telling me to buy crates, which is a little bit strange. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Let's go down to the P90 here. Yeah, I mean, there doesn't appear to be a way to customize this, so it seems like you have to buy those packs to get a bunch of unique guns. That rubs me the wrong way, honestly, because who knows whether or not those guns are actually a little bit more powerful or not. So that, that's a little bit sucky. But yeah, that's the business model. Hard to say at this stage whether or not it's imbalanced or not. It's... I don't know. I really don't. Can you have fun with the default guns, though? Yeah, you can. The game's pretty bad, but it's a lot of fun. It's not well constructed, I feel. And frankly, there are a lot of things that I don't like. I think the recoil is just absurd, even though I've done a decent job of actually handling it. But it's got some interesting ideas going for it. Rolling to put out fires is... An interesting little model, isn't it? That's that's a nice idea. I assume... Oh, never mind. Okay. That's a nice idea. Just combat rolling in general is pretty cool. The fact that it does have lean and peak is also pretty good as well. And the idea that you can shoot propane tanks and shoot and... Or you can actually grab a CO2 extinguisher and spray it in the face of somebody. You can, you can do some pretty silly things. I kind of appreciate that. It might be worth a little bit of your time. I don't think this has got 
legs, really. I have a feeling that there's just too much wrong with it for people to play it for an extended length of time, and it may very well get extremely grindy with the point system and actually unlocking weapons, but I had a, I had a bit of fun in the first few hours of playing this. I really did. Maybe it's just because I'm quite good at it, but I had a laugh. It's just such a cheap budget, B-real, B-rated, B-movie nonsense game. And that's kind of okay. Did it achieve being the successor to Counter-Strike? No! Not in any way is that true. Not a hope. Is it still a bit of fun anyway? Yes. Does that mean it's a good game? No. Eh? This is the... the triple X of Counter-Strike style games. It is not remotely tactical in any way, and perhaps the developers required an intervention prior to releasing this game. It's the Jonar Hex of video games. Just a bad, enjoyable action game. Might be good for a laugh. Good for a giggle. That's about all I can say. My name's been Total Biscuit, taking a little look here at Tactical Intervention, which is currently free to play, available on Steam, and you can pick up the packs for it for about $15, your regional equivalent, or just buy in-game if you so desire. I probably wouldn't. The default guns are actually kind of fine, you don't need to worry too much, and... Well, putting money in into a game like this at this stage, uh, is maybe not, but... <laughs> Bloody screen! So real. There we go. Tactical Intervention, folks, you can play it right now on Steam. Just... Download it, play the highway mode for an hour, and then leave. That sounds like the best idea. Oh, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just amused by bad games. It's entirely possible. I, Marlo Briggs is a... A guy said fucking just fucking propane. Can I detonate that while it's in his hand? Where'd it go? That propane tank was actually larger in his hand, I feel, than it was elsewhere. Oh, man. That's so comically silly. Oh my, oh my, oh my. He's clipping through the door! Ah! Oh. Jeez. It reminds me of playing Half-Life 1 where I used to just download random mods and see if they were any good, and most of the time they weren't, but they made a free-to-play game out of that random mod instead. We still had fun doing that, though, and frankly, I've actually had a decent amount of fun playing Tactical Intervention as well. Oh... It's uh, so, so bad it's good, I think, is a good description of this one. Very much so. Give it a, give it a bash. See what you think. I'll see you next time.